The electrical resistance of an electrical conductor is the opposition to the passage of an electric current through that conductor. The inverse quantity is electrical conductance, the ease with which an electric current passes. Electrical resistance shares some conceptual parallels with the mechanical notion of friction. The SI unit of electrical resistance is the ohm, while electrical conductance is measured in Siemens. An object of uniform cross-section has a resistance proportional to its resistivity and length and inversely proportional to its cross-sectional area. All materials show some resistance, except for superconductors, which have a resistance of zero. The resistance of an object is defined as the ratio of voltage across it to current through it, while the conductance is the inverse. For a wide variety of materials and conditions, V and I are directly proportional to each other, and therefore I and G are constant. This proportionality is called Ohm's law, and materials that satisfy it are called ohmic materials. In other cases, such as a diode or battery, V and I are not directly proportional, or in other words the ear euro V curve is not a straight line through the origin, and Ohm's law does not hold. In this case, resistance and conductance are less useful concepts, and more difficult to define. The ratio V I is sometimes still useful, and is referred to as a cordial resistance, or static resistance as it corresponds to the inverse slope of a chord between the origin and an ear euro v curve. In other situations, the derivative may be most useful. This is called the differential resistance. Introduction In the hydraulic analogy, current flowing through a wire is like water flowing through a pipe, and the voltage drop across the wire is like the pressure drop that pushes water through the pipe. Conductance is proportional to how much flow occurs for a given pressure and resistance is proportional to how much pressure is required to achieve a given flow. The voltage drop, not the voltage itself, provides the driving force pushing current through a resistor. In hydraulics, it is similar, the pressure difference between two sides of a pipe, not the pressure itself, determines the flow through it. For example, there may be a large water pressure above the pipe, which tries to push water down through the pipe but there may be an equally large water pressure below the pipe, which tries to push water back up through the pipe. If these pressures are equal, no water flows. Two properties a euro geometry and material a euro mostly determine the resistance and conductance of a wire, resistor, or other element. Geometry is important because it is more difficult to push water through a long, narrow pipe than a wide, short pipe. In the same way, a long, thin copper wire has higher resistance than a short, thick copper wire. Materials are important as well. A pipe filled with hair restricts the flow of water more than a clean pipe of the same shape and size. In a similar way, electrons can flow freely and easily through a copper wire, but cannot as easily flow through a steel wire of the same shape and size, and they essentially cannot flow at all through an insulator like rubber, regardless of its shape. The difference between copper steel, and rubber is related to their microscopic structure and electron configuration, and is quantified by a property called resistivity. Conductors and resistors. Substances electricity can flow through are called conductors. A piece of conducting material of a particular resistance meant for use in a circuit is called a resistor. Conductors are made of high conductivity materials such as metals, in particular copper and aluminium. Resistors on the other hand, are made of a wide variety of materials depending on factors such as the desired resistance, amount of energy that it needs to dissipate, precision, and costs. Ohm's law. Ohm's law is an empirical law relating the voltage V across an element to the current I through it. V is directly proportional to I. This law is not always true, for example, it is false for diodes, batteries, etc. However, it is true to a very good approximation for wires and resistors. Materials or objects where Ohm's law is true are called ohmic, whereas objects that do not obey Ohm's law are non-ohmic. Relation to resistivity and conductivity. The resistance of a given object depends primarily on two factors, what material it is made of, and its shape. For a given material, the resistance is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. For example, 
a thick copper wire has lower resistance than an otherwise identical thin copper wire. Also, for a given material, the resistance is proportional to the length. For example, a long copper wire has higher resistance than an otherwise identical short copper wire. The resistance at and conductance G of the conductor of uniform cross section, therefore, can be computed as where is the length of the conductor, measured in meters, m, a is the cross section area of the conductor measured in square meters, mass squared, i florin is the electrical conductivity measured in siemens per meter, and i is the electrical resistivity of the material, measured in ohmmeters. The resistivity and conductivity are proportionality constants, and therefore depend only on the material the wire is made of, not the geometry of the wire. Resistivity and conductivity are reciprocals. Resistivity is a measure of the material's ability to oppose electric current. This formula is not exact, it assumes the current density is totally uniform in the conductor, which is not always true in practical situations. However, this formula still provides a good approximation for long thin conductors such as wires. Another situation for which this formula is not exact is with alternating current, because the skin effect inhibits current flow near the center of the conductor. Then, the geometrical cross-section is different from the effective cross-section in which current actually flows, so resistance is higher than expected. Similarly, if two conductors near each other carry AC current, their resistance is increased due to the proximity effect. At commercial power frequency, these effects are significant for large conductors carrying large currents, such as push bars in an electrical substation, or large power cables carrying more than a few hundred amperes. What determines resistivity? The resistivity of different materials varies by an enormous amount, for example, the conductivity of Teflon is about 1030 times lower than the conductivity of copper. Why is there such a difference? Loosely speaking, a metal has large numbers of delocalized electrons that are not stuck in any one place, but free to move across large distances, whereas in an insulator, each electron is tightly bound to a single molecule, and a great force is required to pull it away. Semiconductors lie between these two extremes. More details can be found in the article, Electrical Resistivity and Conductivity. For the case of electrolyte solutions, see the article, Conductivity. Resistivity varies with temperature. In semiconductors, resistivity also changes when light is shining on it. These are discussed below. Measuring resistance. An instrument for measuring resistance is called an ohmmeter. Simple ohmmeters cannot measure low resistances accurately because the resistance of their measuring leads causes a voltage drop that interferes with the measurement, so more accurate devices use for terminal sensing. Typical resistances Static and differential resistance Many electrical elements, such as diodes and batteries do not satisfy Ohm's law. These are called non-ohmic or non-linear, and are characterized by a near Euro V curve which is not a straight line through the origin. Resistance and conductance can still be defined for non-ohmic elements. However, unlike ohmic resistance, nonlinear resistance is not constant but varies with the voltage or current through the device. Its operating point. There are two types, static resistance, this corresponds to the usual definition of resistance. The voltage divided by the current. It is the slope of the line, cord from the origin through the point on the curve. Static resistance determines the power dissipation in an electrical component. Points on the IV curve located in the second or fourth quadrants, for which the slope of the caudal line is negative, have negative static resistance. Passive devices, which have no source of energy, cannot have negative static resistance. However active devices such as transistors or op-amps can synthesize negative static resistance with feedback, and it is used in some circuits such as gyrators. Differential resistance Differential resistance is the derivative of the voltage with respect to the current. The slope of the IV curve at a point. If the IV curve is known monotonic, the curve has a negative slope in some regions a euro so in these regions the device has negative differential resistance. Devices with negative differential resistance can amplify a signal applied to them, 
and are used to make amplifiers and oscillators. These include tunnel diodes, goon diodes, input diodes, magnetron tubes, and unijunction transistors. AC circuits, impedance and admittance. When an alternating current flows through a circuit, the relation between current and voltage across a circuit element is characterized not only by the ratio of their magnitudes, but also the difference in their phases. For example, in an ideal resistor, the moment when the voltage reaches its maximum, the current also reaches its maximum. But for a capacitor or inductor, the maximum current flow occurs as the voltage passes through zero and vice versa. Complex numbers are used to keep track of both the phase and magnitude of current and voltage. Where, T is time, V, T, and I, T, R, respectively, voltage and current is a function of time, V O, I O, Z, and Y are complex numbers, Z is called impedance, Y is called admittance, re indicates real part, is the angular frequency of the AC current, is the imaginary unit. The impedance and admittance may be expressed as complex numbers that can be broken into real and imaginary parts. Where L and G are resistance and conductance respectively, X is reactance, and B is susceptance. For ideal resistors, Z and Y reduce to A and G respectively, but for AC networks containing capacitors and inductors, X and B are non-zero. For AC circuits, just as for DC circuits, Frequency dependence of resistance, another complication of AC circuits is that the resistance and conductance can be frequency dependent. One reason, mentioned above is the skin effect. Another reason is that the resistivity itself may depend on frequency, energy dissipation and dual heating. Resistors oppose the flow of electric current. Therefore, electrical energy is required to push current through the resistance. This electrical energy is dissipated, heating the resistor in the process. This is called dual heating, also called ohmic heating or resistive heating. The dissipation of electrical energy is often undesired, particularly in the case of transmission losses in power lines. High voltage transmission helps reduce the losses by reducing the current for a given power. On the other hand, dual heating is sometimes useful for example in electric stoves and other electric heaters. As another example, incandescent lamps rely on dual heating, the filament is heated to such a high temperature that it glows white hot with thermal radiation. The formula for dual heating is, where P is the power converted from electrical energy to thermal energy, R is the resistance, and I is the current through the resistor. Dependence of resistance on other conditions, temperature dependence. Near room temperature, the resistivity of metals typically increases as temperature is increased, while the resistivity of semiconductors typically decreases as temperature is increased. The resistivity of insulators and electrolytes may increase or decrease depending on the system. For the detailed behavior and explanation, see electrical resistivity and conductivity. As a consequence, the resistance of wires, resistors, and other components often change with temperature. This effect may be undesired, causing an electronic circuit to malfunction at extreme temperatures. In some cases, however, the effect is put to good use. When temperature-dependent resistance of a component is used purposefully, the component is called a resistance thermometer or thermistor. Resistance thermometers and thermistors are generally used in two ways. First, they can be used as thermometers. By measuring the resistance, the temperature of the environment can be inferred. Second, they can be used in conjunction with dual heating, if a large current is running through the resistor, the resistor's temperature rises and therefore its resistance changes. Therefore, these components can be used in a circuit protection role similar to fuses, or for feedback in circuits, or for many other purposes. In general, Self-heating can turn a resistor into a nonlinear and hysteretic circuit element. For more details see thermistor self-heating effects. If the temperature T does not vary too much, a linear approximation is typically used. Where is called the temperature coefficient of resistance, is a fixed reference temperature, and is the resistance of temperature. The parameter is an empirical parameter fitted from measurement data. Because the linear approximation is only an approximation, 
is different for different reference temperatures. For this reason it is usual to specify the temperature that was measured at with a suffix, such as, and the relationship only holds in a range of temperatures around the reference. The temperature coefficient is typically plus 3A, 10A3 car 1 to plus 6A, 10A3 car 1 for metals near room temperature. It is usually negative for semiconductors and insulators, with highly variable magnitude. Strain dependence. Just as the resistance of a conductor depends upon temperature, the resistance of a conductor depends upon strain. By placing a conductor under tension, the length of the section of conductor under tension increases and its cross-sectional area decreases. Both these effects contribute to increasing the resistance of the strained section of conductor. Under compression, the resistance of the strained section of conductor decreases. See the discussion on strain gauges for details about devices constructed to take advantage of this effect. Light illumination dependence. Some resistors, particularly those made from semiconductors, exhibit photoconductivity, meaning that their resistance changes when light is shining on them. Therefore they are called photoresistors. These are a common type of light detector. Superconductivity. Superconductors are materials that have exactly zero resistance and infinite conductance, because they can have V equals zero and E a per mole zero. This also means there is no dual heating, or in other words no dissipation of electrical energy. Therefore, if superconductive wire is made into a closed loop, current flows around the loop forever. Superconductors require cooling to temperatures near 4 kelvins with liquid helium for most metallic superconductors like NBSN alloys, or cooling to temperatures near 77 kelvins with liquid nitrogen for the expensive, brittle and delicate ceramic high-temperature superconductors. Nevertheless, there are many technological applications of superconductivity, including superconducting magnets. See also References External links, the notion of electrical resistance. Review of the equations that determine the value of electrical resistance. Clemson Vehicular Electronics Laboratory, Resistance Calculator.